Hello. Is there something that you're finding that's difficult in your life right now? This week I'd like to talk about responsibility. I'm Kathleen Rafter and I'm your inner peace coach. Thank you for joining me. It's awesome to have you here. And in order to create inner peace, we have to take 100% responsibility for anything that's happening in our lives. I know sometimes it can be a hard pill to swallow. You know, we've gone through and we've attracted whatever's gone on in our lives. We've attracted it through our thoughts, through our feelings, through our actions, through our conversations with other people. And the more we hang on to that, the more we let our ego really just get a hold of it, the less inner peace we are going to feel. And I'd like to tell a story about um, Ho'oponopono. You may have heard about this practice. You may know the story that I'm going to tell, but um, it's always worth hearing. I love hearing the story. And it's, I first heard about it through Joe Vitale, Dr. Joe Vitale. And the story revolves around a psychologist, a Hawaiian psychologist called Dr. Hugh Lem. And Dr. Lem was a psychologist who was invited to come and work at um, a hospital in Hawaii in the psychiatric ward. And no one was able to stay on staff there. Everybody left even the psychologists. The psychologists were taking the, doing the traditional thing of bringing patients in. And um, it, it was a very dangerous place. There were a lot of criminals who were very violent. And the psychologists would take um, these patients in, personal consultations and group consultations, nothing seemed to work. And it was such a dangerous place that there was a lot of absenteeism with the rest of the staff. So they really couldn't keep anyone on staff. But Dr. Len came in and he just did something very radical. He used an, the ancient Hawaiian practice of healing and forgiveness called Ho'oponopono. And as the story goes, what Dr. Len did was either sit in his office with the roster of the patients. He did never met, had never had official consultations with any of them, but he sat with the roster of the patients and he would go through and use the Ho'opono Pono practice, and it's just a series of making four statements, which I'll describe in a, a few minutes here. But he either did that, stayed in his office, and went through and used Ho'oponopono with the roster of the patients, the, the criminals who were there, or he went out into the ward and just talked to people just very, um, you know, off the cuff, very um, unofficially, very casually. And what happened after three months was that there was a lot less violence, there was a lot less absenteeism, the prisoners were able to come out of solitary confinement, they were able to get out of the shackles and even go outside to do some tasks outside. And the staff started seeing what was going on, the staff who was still there. And what they did was actually join Dr. Len, they found out what he was doing and they all joined in the practice. And within three years, that ward was closed. There were still some, some patients there who still needed medical surgery attention and they went into other wards or other units of the hospital. And there was even one prisoner who went through and admitted what he had done and um, you know went through the process that he needed to go through. But I mean it's just an amazing story. And when I heard it, we, had a, we have a son who's now a well-adjusted, wonderful young man of 20 but when he was in middle school, we really had some challenges, and I started using this. And what I would do is just imagine myself in a violet bubble. Violet is the color for release. And I went through and repeated these statements. And they can be told, they can be said in any order, it doesn't matter. But I was speaking to God, I was speaking to the universe, taking full responsibility for whatever had happened with respect to my son. So the statements are, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And again, taking full responsibility for anything that I had done in my life at any time, including anything that was off of in my relationship with my son. I have also used this, I work with a very young staff at the local hospital, and my um, my boss and his boss were a little bit worried about how I would be able to relate to these teenagers. But being able to use this again, they were just amazed at how well I was able to relate 
to this group of young people. So I would like to um, ask you, you know, where could you use this in your life? Where are you having problems in your life? And where can you use such a simple thing? It's such a simple practice. And again, I've gone through and I've imagined myself in a, a violet bubble. And I've just repeated the statements, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I repeat them for however long, you know, a situation I have. I generally repeat things in multiples of nine. And um, you could go through and do this. If you're having trouble with somebody or some situation and you were to do this before you go to sleep at night, before going to bed, you would have an awesome sleep and you would have peace all throughout the day. If you're having issues with somebody or some situation at work or with family, just go through and repeat this. Um, I have a client who actually used this and they just had great results. They're having family issues and things really worked out well for them. So I wanna thank you again for joining me. Um, it's been great to have you here. And I'm gonna ask you to keep the afternoon of the tw June 12th open. I'm gonna be going through and going even more in depth um, with these ideas that I've been bringing up the last uh, the last few weeks. Um, I'm going to be here every week giving you little nuggets, but on the June 12th, we're going to go through more in depth, and um, I'd love to have you there. So again, thank you for joining me. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.